GM built a lot of great cars over the decades, including some legendary vehicles like this 1972 Chevrolet Monte Carlo. For those who know, the Monte Carlo was introduced in the 1970 model year as Chevrolet's response to the very successful personal luxury coupe trend that really started for General Motors with the 1963 Riviera. But more recently, Chevrolet was kind of trying to emulate some of the success that Pontiac was having with their Grand Prix, in particular the one that had been introduced for the 1969 model year, which was all new and highly successful. Now, this Monte Carlo, as I mentioned, itself was successful, but part of the reason for Chevrolet's success were the engines that were under hood in many of its vehicles. More specifically, by this time, the Chevrolet small block V8 in particular had earned a reputation as a venerable, reliable, smooth running power plant that provided great horsepower not only for larger cars like this Monte Carlo as well as the Caprice, in which case it was often a little bit larger even than the typical 350. There were lots of Caprices that were born with a standard 400 cubic inch small block V8, but it also powered high performance vehicles like the Chevrolet Corvette. And you could get some pretty hot small blocks like the LT1 engine. No, not the LT1 engine from the 90s, the LT1 engine from several decades prior to that in your Corvette. The Chevrolet small block, as I mentioned, just earned a reputation as an awesome V8 engine. And that reputation, frankly, continues until and through today with a lot of the LS engines that Chevrolet makes and the small blocks, which while they don't share much with these Gen 1 small block V8s, they still have, well, a similar philosophy of simplicity of design and, of course, the overhead valve configuration. Now, the small block came in all shapes and sizes, all the way from a 262 cubic inch variant that was introduced in the mid-1970s, 1975 and 1976, which was actually smaller, by the way, than the originally introduced small block, which was 265 cubic inches when it came out in 1955. And as I mentioned, the largest small block variant was the 400 cubic inch small block that you see here that found its way under hood in many different Chevrolet vehicles, particularly the Caprice as the standard engine in the 1970s. It was also used in some trucks and vans through the 1981 model year. So you could get that 400 in a number of different configurations. Now, the Chevrolet small blocks, while they certainly have a reputation for reliability and smoothness and durability, they did have some challenges associated with them. More specifically, some of the small blocks, particularly the 305 cubic inch variants of the mid late 1970s, all the way through the early 1980s, had a reputation for eating their camshafts because the camshafts were not properly made and heat treated and the lobes would go flat and you'd have to replace the camshaft in the vehicle in order to get, restore your full power. So that obviously was not an ideal scenario because that's a pretty big job. Small blocks also, I would say, had another weakness, which was their water pumps. The water pump seemingly went out with relative frequency compared to other General Motors V8s. For example, I don't think I've ever had to do a water pump on a Cadillac V8, whether that was a 500, a 425, a 368. They all seemingly held together just fine. Now, there might be some water pumps that I've done on earlier Cadillac V8s, like the 429 cubic inch and the 390, but that 472, 500, 368 engine, uh, the water pumps are pretty gosh darn stout. But for whatever reason, the Chevrolet V8, eh, they kind of last maybe about 50,000 miles, 60,000 miles before the bearing starts to go or they start weeping. So something to be aware of there as well. However, there is one component of the Chevrolet small block V8s, or at least of a number of them. This did not pertain to all model years, but it definitely pertained to some model years particularly in the 1970s. And if anybody knows the exact model years of this, write it as a comment in the comment section. And this is my nomination for the worst component of the Chevrolet small blocks. And that is what you see there that's boxed in yellow. That is the oil fill cap. Now the oil fill cap, you say, what it can be so bad about an oil fill cap? Most of them are metal. You twist them off. It's no big deal. You fill the oil. This one, by the way, that you're seeing that's pictured is it has a kind of tall spout to it. This is a truck application, and it has a brace that you can see in the other yellow box. But notice what is atop that tube. It's a rubber plug that says oil. And yes, this is stock. Chevrolet employed 
rubber oil fill plugs on many of these small block V8s, even the ones without this tall fill tube. My 1972 Monte Carlo, for example, has a factory rubber oil fill plug on it. And in order to refresh the engine oil, you remove the rubber plug and dump the oil in. Now, it sounds kind of harmless and not really a big deal, but let's think about what happens to this particular rubber plug and where is it located? It's in the engine bay where it gets lots of thermal cycling because you start your car up, the engine gets hot, you turn your car off, and it cools down, especially in the winter time. So this rubber fill plug is expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting continuously as you operate the car. And as a consequence, what happens to rubber when it gets hit with a lot of thermal cycles? It tends to harden, right? It basically becomes almost rock hard, if you will. And what's a consequence of that? Well, one day you go to fill your oil in your Chevrolet small block and your oil fill plug just crumbles and you risk pieces falling inside the engine in through the valve cover. Uh, it's just not a great idea. I actually, on my 72 Monte Carlo, I've replaced the factory oil fill plug, which is painted the Chevrolet reddish orange, uh, with an aftermarket one, just because the original one, it's pretty hard by this point, and I've kept it. So if whomever the subsequent owner of the car is wants to put it back in or just wants it, they can have it. But I want a rubber plug that's actually pliable that I can move in and out without worrying about it breaking. I remember the first time I tried to change the oil on my Monte Carlo, I thought that I was going to break that oil fill plug. And ever since, I've employed an aftermarket one on it. Now, what's interesting, too, about this oil fill plug, and you can see why I don't care for it, was that this, in, this idea did not stop with the Chevrolet small block engine for Chevrolet. They continued on with it for some other engines. And the other one that I can think of off the top of my head is the Chevrolet 60 degree 2.8 liter V6 in some applications like the J car. Not all applications, but the J cars had, for instance, a rubber oil fill plug once that 2.8 liter V6 was fuel injected. So the 2.8 liter V6 in my Cimarron, for instance, my 1986 Cimarron, has an oil fill plug that is rubber. So Chevrolet kept doing this over and over for many different years, and there have to be millions of vehicles out there with this rubber oil fill plug. And, you know, again, I just don't think that it was a great idea for cost savings. I get that rubber is definitively cheaper probably than metal, and the it's probably even cheaper yet because you don't have to have a surface on the valve cover for that oil fill cap to mate up with where it twists into. You just have a plug that plugs a hole. That's all that is. Um, but I don't think that that was money well saved in this case. I think that was a pretty myopic decision on the part of General Motors to put a rubber oil fill plug in a place that gets a lot of thermal cycling. We could talk about some other places where General Motors puts components that maybe aren't the smartest or the best idea. Put a comment in your comments section, whether it's GM, Ford, or Chrysler. They all did variants of this, and for various reasons. Uh, put, an, put the ideas that you have of the worst ideas that come to mind in the comments section, because like I said, I can think of many different instances. By the way, not just for GM, Ford, and Chrysler, but also for foreign automakes. There's plenty of instances where you kind of scratch your head as to why in the world did engineers place something in that location, probably because of some constraint. There's probably some rational explanation, or it could just be purely cost savings, which I have to think was the principal motivator in this case for why Chevrolet elected to go with the oil fill plug made of rubber. But in any case, this was one of those ideas that I just don't think was a great one. And, you know, it kind of mars the small block a little bit, particularly if you got to take the valve cover off because your oil fill plug just crumbles in your hand when you try to remove it from the valve cover. It was, again, probably just fine when the car was new. But after a few thermal cycles and time, well, it just wasn't going to cut the mustard. Thanks again for watching. Like I said, put an idea for any of the worst ideas that you can come up with across any auto make in the comments section. And 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I love Chevrolet small blocks. They're just great engines. This is unfortunately one of my least favorite components that they employed. Thanks for watching.